Oh, hello my friends, hope you are well. Recently I've been having some fun, trying out some different basin schemes for some miniatures I'm working on, and I thought today I might share a few really simple and easy ideas with you guys that are perfect for beginners or for people just looking to get a bunch of bases finished quickly. So let's get into it. The first base I'm going to show you today is this old mossy cobblestone one, or as my wife called it when she saw it, the Martian base? Yeah, I don't know either, but anyway, all you'll need for this is a bit of high density foam like XPS, some foam safe glue, a hobby knife, a toothpick or a similar utensil, and some paints. So all I'm doing for these is first gluing down some roughly cut foam circles onto the bases themselves and then trimming them down to a more appropriate size once the glue has dried to make them a bit neater. Next up, to get the actual cobblestone texture itself, I take a sharp hobby knife and use this to trace in some stone-like shapes into the surface of the foam. And you don't need to go very deep with this, just use the tip of your knife to make some shallow incisions. To get your stones looking relatively realistic, make sure to mix up the shapes and sizes, being a bit random like natural stones would be, and also add in some small filler stones between the larger pieces, as these really help to sell the effect. But do be mindful of the scale of the miniature you'll be adding to the base, as cobblestones are generally sort of foot sized or smaller, so if you're making your stones too big, it will throw off the scale and make your miniature look like a tiny man standing on a normal sized road. Once you've traced out all the stones, take your toothpick or similar device and start reinforcing those lines between the stones. I used to do the whole cobblestone process using a hobby knife which was really long winded and annoying but I watched a small world workshop video where he made a stone wall from foam and he used a toothpick for this gap adding process which has made this step so much faster and easier so credit to him for this idea and check out his video if you're interested. But yeah, I use the toothpick to widen those gaps and I also use it at an angle to kind of smooth down the edges of the stones to give them more of a natural appearance and afterwards you should be left with something looking like this. Pretty cool and ready for painting. So to base coat and kind of prime these babies up, I mix together some acrylic grey paint with a bit of PVA glue and start whacking that down. You can paint straight onto the foam, but I find that adding this paint PVA hybrid layer first adds some extra durability and makes the foam more receptive to the following coats of paint. Once the darker grey base coat's on, it's then a simple case of dry brushing progressively lighter coats of grey onto the stones to get a bit of coloured variation going on and then hitting the edges with some off-white to accentuate them further. You don't need to hit every every single one and they don't need to be perfect, it's just another way of adding some visual interest. Now I like my cobblestones to look all old and mossy so for my next step I'm using a bit of a time saving product being this dirty down moss and I'm applying it over the whole surface. If you don't like moss then just go further with your dry brushing and highlighting techniques to bring in some natural stony colours or if you like moss but don't have this product then you can just use some green washes and a few layers of stippled on mossy colours. Either way I'm using this today and I'm wiping off the excess with a damp cotton bud to reveal the stones below. Then to finish them off I just go around and add a few little splotches of an off-white stony colour to reinforce some of the lighter parts and give the stones more of a natural random appearance. I give these puppies a quick rim job and they are good to go. Easy peasy. So yeah, that is a quick guide to cobblestone bases. You can have a play around with this technique and find the pattern of stone or mixture of colours that work best for you in the miniatures you're using. And it also works great for diorama building, so double whammy. Up next, I'm making some nice grimy industrial bases that could work well for 40k or a bunch of other kind of sci-fi games. And these might look a bit more complicated than the cobblestone ones we just did, but they're actually really easy once you've made a few of them. The required materials for these ones are a bit harder to pinpoint specifically, as you can really use a whole ton of different things. But for me personally, I'll often use stuff like guitar strings, cheap jewellery and chains, different gauges of steel wire, plastic card sheets with different textures, styrene rods with different shapes and sizes, bits of packaging from bottles and random assorted parts of miniatures and leftover miniature stuff. The list is really endless. You just need to see what interesting parts you can scavenge up from your surroundings and you'll be good to go. When it comes to actually assembling your industrial bases, again, there's no strict rules really, but I like to kind of use the following four guiding principles. 
The first one is adding a nice textured piece of floor into the base, something with a cool industrial look as this sets the tone for the rest of the build. The materials are most often used for the flooring include this diamond pattern plastic card which is really cool, these sandwich bag ties that kind of look like corrugated metal when they're all linked up together, or this plastic card with the squared texture. All of these are a safe bet but really anything with an interesting man-made texture will work well for you. Secondly is to start building up some kind of generic industrial or mechanical looking items using some of your more bulky components like the plastic card rods or pieces of packaging and bottles and whatever else you've been able to rustle up. If you have a specific contraption in mind then use that as a reference to work towards when you're assembling your pieces but if not then honestly you can just go a bit random with it. I didn't want this section to just be take some random looking sci-fi industrial sh start gluing it down but that's pretty much all there is to this really. Mix in some different size objects with different angular pieces and different shapes and whatever else you can cram into it like I'm doing here and you will be good to go. The third kind of principle is to add cables and wires to the base made from guitar strings and steel wire or hair bands or whatever you have access to. Honestly if you think the build isn't going well or is looking a bit weird then just shove on as many of these as you can and you'll instantly have something more industrial looking. You can bunch them up together or have them curled around other details or covering up areas that don't look very good whatever you want just remember when in doubt add a ton of cables for some instant sci-fi industrial goodness and the final principle is to use some of the little greebly bits and leftovers from the sprues of your miniatures to add some extra texture and visual interest to the base. This step really brings it together as miniature parts will often have little details and stuff that you can't replicate with other materials you have at home and you'll almost always be left with little odds and ends when you build your miniatures. So make sure you save these as they can be great additions to your bases. And there we go, a bit more of an ambiguous building guide than the cobblestones but really you can't go wrong here if you stick to those principles. Also, the more you do these little builds, the more mental shortcuts you'll uncover for creating industrial and mechanical looking pieces, so have a little play around and see what you can make. The painting for these bases, however, is a very simple process, so after priming them up in black, I just go around and give them an overbrushing with some dark metallic paint. I then chuck on a dark wash like Nolan Oil to bring out some definition to the individual components, and I can then add my rust. Much like the cobblestone base, I'm using another time saving paint effect, dirty down rust this time, and this is not a sponsor or anything like that, I just really like using these. So same as before, coat the entire base in this stuff and then start taking away some of the excess with a damp cotton bud to give it a bit more variation. If you don't have this, then you can use a dark brown wash followed by some brown and dirty orange stippled layers or whatever your preferred rust method is, but in the interest of saving time and energy, I highly recommend the dirty down rust here. Once that's done, I like to just add in some final flourishes of colour using some red and yellow colours to pick out a few of those wires I added in earlier. And the yellow and black hazard stripe will always feel at home on a base like this, so definitely try adding some of these. You can stipple some browns and oranges onto the brighter colours you're adding to help them blend in with the rusty background. And then finish everything off by touching up some of the metallics using the original colour from earlier. Another rim job and they are done. So yeah, my biggest recommendation for these kind of bases is to use the four guiding principles I discussed. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds really deep, doesn't it? Four guiding principles, but it's not. Um, and also just to experiment and see what kind of little industrial looking things you can build up using your readily available materials, as having these ideas locked and loaded in your brain holes will help you save time and build bases like these really easily. Last up today will be these nice little natural bases which might be my favourite kind of bases to build because they're super easy and because I just love nature -y shit really. To get them started it's good to add in some kind of ledge or mound for our miniatures to stand on and you can use various materials for this like foam or clay but I've been enjoying using cork sheets recently and I basically just layer up a couple of bits of this, snip away any excess and then rough up the sides and tops as necessary. You might want to add more or less layers depending on the height rules of the game you're playing but I usually go for two layers of this stuff and hey presto your mum smells like pesto we've now got a really easy little rock ledge here. Next up I like to take some basin mixture like this but you can just use sand and some fine gravel if you don't have any and I sprinkle it around the sides and on top of the cork to add more of a rocky and gravelly texture where needed. This step isn't crucial and you can skip it or sub it out for a mud mixture or more cork if you like but I like this method as it's a really easy way of adding extra texture. Anyway give it all a quick prime in, I'm going for black again and then we can start painting. You can use whatever rocky or muddy colours you want for this but today I'm starting with a nice kind of clay colour 
coloured brown and then I'm just going to dry brush on progressively lighter shades of brown and ochre to a smaller surface area each time just as a way of accentuating all those nice craggy and gravelly areas we've added. I'll then use some washes to add in a bit more depth to the recessed areas first using a dark brown wash over a good portion of the base and then using a dark green one as dark green washes work really well on natural terrain like this. And of course since it is a citadel wash I make sure to spill it not once but twice sacrificing my last few dregs of it to the gods of painting R.I.P. When the washes have dried off completely I'll give it another quick dry brush or two on any areas that look a bit too dark and I'm pretty happy with how these are looking now so I can finish them off by adding some greenery and plant life. For this step you just want to use whatever flocks and tufts and whatever else you have available to build up some of that natural plant life and add some nice bursts of colour. I like to add my larger tufts first and then use some finer flocking to kind of blend everything in together but like the industrial bases from a moment ago there's no wrong or right way to do this. You might want to use different tufts and flowers and flocks and whatever else depending on the kind of miniature you're basing but this should just serve as a really simple demonstration of how to assemble bases like this and how easy it is to build up a nice natural look. For a quick tip the tufts are usually self adhesive but over time that adhesive can weaken and they might fall off if you're kind of playing with them quite regularly so use a little dot of super glue if you want them to really stay in place for a long time and you can just use your box standard PVA for attaching your finer flock. I give these bases their final rim job, that's been like 9 different rim jobs for me in this video and they are now finished and ready to mount your miniatures. So there we have it my friends, three very quick and simple bases you can make at home for your miniatures. And as I kind of talked about, you don't need to make yours exactly like mine. This is just meant to serve as a rough guide for those of you looking for some inspiration for your miniature bases and to show a few techniques you can take home and play around with and modify to fit your own purposes. One quick thing to mention is to be mindful of where you're gluing stuff down as you want to still be able to attach your miniature to the base once it's finished. I've definitely gone all out on a base and then realized my miniature wouldn't fit onto it properly. So yeah, make sure you test them out as you go. And I have a ton of other easy to make base and schemes like this. So let me know if you're interested in seeing any more of them as I'd definitely be interested in making more. And let me know down in the comments down below which was your favorite as well. Anyway, as always, if you've enjoyed this video, then please subscribe or leave a like or a comment. And for now, I have been your friendly neighborhood swamp rat, and I will see you very soon in another video. See ya.